Hello everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day so far. Probably not considering you're watching this video. This is a step-by-step -step guide on how to clean a carburetor on a Predator 212 engine. This will work on other engines, however I'm doing it on a Predator 212. The first thing I'm going to do that shows a symptom of having a bad carburetor is taking the gas cap off, smelling the gas, and looking inside the tank to see what we can see. Now here I show you that the, the little screen in the gas tank is tinted an orange color when it's not supposed to be that color. That's a sign that this engine has been sitting for a while, therefore it probably has bad gas. So right here I'm just taking the air cover off in order. This is a test to see if the engine will start with more airflow, and we I loosened up the the air filter as well to give a little bit more airflow. And here we're about to test to see if it starts in the start position. Look at that. So you could see when I started it up and changed it from start to run, it died down when I put it to run. That is 100% a sign of a bad carburetor, so we're going to go ahead and clean that now. Alright, now we're going to be taking two 10 millimeter nuts off, and that's the only thing holding this on, other than the upper clamp that goes into the gas tank and the one that goes into the overhead valve cover. You're going to have to use pliers to get the top one out, but the overhead valve cover does not have any clamps on it. We're going to use some pliers to remove the clamp on the fuel line, and we're going to proceed to drain the gas into uh, old water bottles. Make sure you have a bunch on hand if you have a lot of gas in the tank. So uh, all of these water bottles later, we finally drained the fuel, at least almost all of it. Let's see, I'm going to turn the uh, dirty at all. You can see there's a little bit, a little bit of fuel at the bottom, a little bit. All right, now we're going to remove the 10 millimeter bolt that's holding the carburetor bowl on. And then we're going to clean both of the jets that are inside. And you just gotta drain out some of the gas that's in it first. And you can fully remove it. Make sure the gasket's on the bolt when it comes out. And make sure the gasket doesn't fall out that holds the bowl on. Now we're gonna use a flathead screwdriver. It should be the right size, it shouldn't be too big or too small. And then we're just gonna screw that jet out. Be careful that you don't strip it. And then. There it is. You can see there's no hole in the center. There should be. That is definitely the problem. Now we can tap or push out the emulsion tube that's directly in the center. You can see it fall out the bottom. There it is. We're going to clean those and get back. Alright, I actually have uh, brand new jets that uh, I, I'm just going to trade it out. But I did clean the emulsion tube. You can see through it now. You can see that. All right. So now we're going to be putting the thinner, longer side of the emulsion tube into the carburetor. Then we put the jet in, bottom side down, so we can screw it in. Now we're screwing it in gently, but also tight, so you don't strip it. Check to make sure your float and valve work, which they do in my case. Put that bowl back on make sure the gaskets on there on both the bolt and the top of the bowl area and now we can put that air filter cover back on and make sure that all of the tubes get hooked up as well like the I'm using pliers to put the 
uh, overhead valve cover uh, hose back in. You also want to remember that one that hooks into the gas tank as well. Tighten those 10 millimeter bolts back up and check for leaks and then if you don't have any leaks, start it up, you're all good.